What's up, Dragon Slayers? Today's video dives into what is insulin resistance. I know that I've covered this one before, but this is according to Jason Fung. So don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out. Let's get started. One of insulin's main jobs is to move glucose from the bloodstream into the cells so that it can be used for energy. If you have insulin resistance, your cells are no longer sensitive to insulin. Normal amounts of insulin are not able to move glucose cells, leading to a buildup of glucose in the blood. To compensate, the body must produce extra insulin to force the glucose in. This leads to constant high insulin levels, which blocks fat burning. But what causes insulin resistance in the first place? The clue lies in its very name. Insulin resistance develops because cells need to resist the effects of too much insulin. The root cause of the problem is consistently high levels of insulin, which creates a vicious cycle. Too much insulin creates resistance. Insulin resistance triggers higher levels of insulin, and that in turn only serves to stimulate more resistance. The cycle reinforces itself each time it goes around. The way to, su su to successfully break the insulin resistance cycle is not to continually increase insulin levels, but to drastically decrease insulin levels. This sounds almost counterintuitive, but consider the analogous problem of antibiotic resistance. When an antibiotic is first used, it kills off most bacteria. But a few bacteria are naturally resistant, and these survive. And with the rest of the bacteria gone, they're able to flourish without any competition for resources. These resistant bacteria produce and reproduce and spread, rendering the antibiotic less effective in general. There are fewer bacteria that it will work against. In this case, antibiotics create antibiotic resistance. How do you stop antibiotic resistance? The knee-jerk reaction is to use even higher doses of antibiotics to kill the resistant bacteria. And this will work for a time. But eventually, the higher dose of antibiotics only creates more resistance. This creates a vicious cycle of antibiotic usage and development of resistance. The answer is the exact opposite. We must severely curtail the use of antibiotics so resistant bacteria don't flourish. The same logic applies to insulin resistance. When our cells become less sensitive to insulin, the body's knee-jerk reaction is to increase insulin production. It helps for a while, but over time, this only creates more insulin resistance and triggers the vicious cycle of increasing insulin and increasing resistance. The answer is really the exact opposite. Since insulin resistance develops in response to persistently high insulin levels, we must create concurrent periods, recurrent periods of very low insulin levels. If we are able to break the cycle of insulin resistance, then insulin levels remain high. It, so, yeah, if we're unable to break the cycle of insulin resistance, then insulin levels remain high. This blocks our ability to burn the body fat we have so carefully stored away. Our body is constantly receiving the signal to store energy as fat and is never told to burn fat. Insulin plays a crucial role in the decision of which fuel to burn. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out. And remember, guys, that together, you and I will slay the dreaded diabetes dragon.